2005 was a difficult year for 4Kids Entertainment. Pokemon's popularity was so low at the time that the company had to end its contract with 4Kids in order to cut costs. Yu-Gi-Oh! had been steadily declining since the 2004 film, and while Yu-Gi-Oh! GX had initially captivated audiences, it ultimately failed to restore Yu-Gi-Oh!'s popularity. Shaman King was a massive hit, but the series was coming to an end. And despite its popularity overseas, One Piece was struggling to gain a following in the West. I wonder why that happened. The lackluster appeal of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX combined with the loss of their two biggest franchises could spell doom for the company. Four Kids was in a bind. They needed to act quickly because there was nothing new on the horizon. Enter Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters, the first and only American Yu-Gi-Oh! spinoff. Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters was never shown in Japan because the series was entirely produced by Four Kids for the European and North American markets. It first aired as a movie on Yu-Gi-Oh!.com in May of 2006, then as a 12-episode series in September of the same year. During its brief run, a real-life Capsule Monsters board game was launched to capitalize on the success of the series. And as you might have guessed from the title of this video, it failed miserably. Now, I know it's popular to bash on 4Kids, and since Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters was created by them, I could easily just point the finger at them and call it a day. But in all honesty, Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters had real potential to be a longer series and a successful game. Obviously, that potential was never realized, so today, we're going to discuss what went wrong. The biggest difference between Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters and the rest of Yu-Gi-Oh! anime is the absence of Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Fans of the manga and the 1998 anime will point out that Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't really about card games at all, as the series began by depicting a boy who makes friends through games in general, rather than a single game. However, when Capsule Monsters debuted in 2006, this was not widely known outside of Japan. Of course, there were some manga readers among the fanbase, but the majority of Western fans were introduced to Yu-Gi-Oh! through the 4Kids version of the anime. And aside from one minor exception, the only game featured in that version of the story was the Duel Monsters card game. So at this point, in just about everywhere that isn't Japan, the card game had become so inextricably linked to Yu-Gi-Oh!'s identity that it simply couldn't be removed. At the very least, it would be extremely difficult to do so. Here's where things start to get interesting. Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters was not invented by 4Kids Entertainment. The Capsule Monsters game first emerged in Chapter 24 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga. It also appeared in the Toei anime adaptation and was turned into two separate video games before the anime or card game ever made it outside of Japan. A third Capsule Monsters video game, Capsule Monster Coliseum, was released at the end of 2004, not long before planning for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters anime began. Based on the timing of the series and some of the similarities, the 2004 game is most likely what sparked the idea for a Capsule Monster anime in the first place. If only Season 0 had aired in America, this would be considered a strategic move. But given how popular the game was in Japan, the fact that a Capsule Monsters anime was never attempted over there should have been a huge red flag, but 4Kids must have believed that the potential payoff was well worth the risk. Even so, the potential for Capsule Monsters in the West was not significantly hampered by this. In my opinion, the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG wouldn't have become the international sensation that it is today if it had not been for the 4Kids adaptation of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters. As much as the censorship irritates us now, there were so many FCC no-nos in the early 2000s that made it impossible to air Yu-Gi-Oh! in its original form. 4Kids doesn't get enough credit for all of the work they did to make Yu-Gi-Oh! more accessible for the Western audience. This is why, despite being based on a Japanese exclusive game, I believe Capsule Monsters could have still been a huge success. All they had to do was properly insert the idea into an exciting adventure featuring some of the most beloved Yu-Gi-Oh! characters. Unfortunately, this is where they dropped the ball the most. But before we get into the plot, we need to talk about the release, because it was very strange. Earlier in this video I stated that the Capsule Monster series debuted in September of 2006, but that is not technically correct, because the first four episodes of the series aired in Ireland in January and February of 2006. It's unclear whether this was intentional or unintentional, given that RTE2, the Irish television station that aired Capsule Monsters, had premiered the final episodes of other Yu-Gi-Oh! seasons before most other regions. The problem here is that the show was never promoted before it aired, and it was listed on RTE's TV guide as Yu-Gi-Oh!, not Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters, despite the fact that it was a separate series. As you can imagine, those who were able to watch it were taken aback by what they saw. The opening theme was the same, but the animation style was noticeably different since Capsule Monsters was produced at the same time as Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which is animated in a different style. 
One Irish viewer in particular was so surprised that she posted her reaction to a live journal community, along with screenshots to prove it was real. The entire thread has been archived, so I'll include a link to it in the description for those who want to read the reactions. Now let's talk about the contents of the anime itself. When I first sat down to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters, it felt like I was transported back in time to see a special event that I had missed as a child. But that feeling was short-lived. It begins when Yuki's grandfather informs him that he is leaving on an expedition. Then we cut to a scene that looks a lot like the first scene in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters. Yugi is explaining game rules to a friend in his classroom, but this time it's Teya instead of Joey, and the game is different because that's the whole point of this show. Joey interrupts them because he has won a free trip to India. Then while they are traveling via a private jet, it crashes somewhere before they arrive at their destination. There, they discover a pyramid and a friend of Yugi's grandfather named Alexander. Alexander explains that he and Yugi's grandfather were investigating the pyramid when Yugi's grandfather went missing. They search for him in the pyramid, but when Yugi and his friends discover a mysterious map, they are transported to the world of capsule monsters. The group is divided and each member finds their own capsule monster, which is basically just a wild creature that can be captured via a capsule. Why does that sound familiar? Anyway, Yugi discovers Celtic Guardian, Taya discovers one of the monsters she used in a filler episode, and Tristan discovers... Pikachu? Okay, so Capsule Monsters may have taken some inspiration from Pokemon. But this is only the first episode, there are 12 of them. There must be more to it than that, right? Well, shortly thereafter, Yugi and his friends regroup and team up in order to complete a series of trials so they can escape. These trials are nothing special. Each one boils down to finding a riddle and then discovering the answer through a Capsule Monsters battle. Copying another series is bad enough, but Capsule Monsters' biggest flaw is that it is extremely boring. There are a few cool things that happen. Yugi eventually discovers a piece of armor that allows him to fuse with his monsters, and then he uses that to fuse with Blue Eyes White Dragon. It's not much, but it's the closest we've ever gotten to seeing Yugi actually summon Blue Eyes White Dragon. But seeing Blue Eyes White Dragon was a little frustrating too, because it made me realize that Kaiba is nowhere to be found, even though he's in the opening sequence. And in fact, all of the major villains from Duel Monsters were in the opening too, even though none of them appear in the show either. It's possible they intended to make more seasons involving some of the other characters, but given that the opening song wasn't even changed, it's more likely that they didn't have the time or money to create new visuals. I will say though, I like the villain a lot. Remember that Alexander guy from the beginning? It turns out that he is Alexander the Great. Yes, that Alexander the Great. When he meets Yugi in the game, he tells him that while in Egypt, he picked up a necklace to bring him good luck. But when he put it on, he was split into two personalities, one good and one evil. This is due to the fact that his necklace was actually the Millennium Ring. He admits that as time passed, the bad side became more difficult to suppress, and his men eventually turned against him. When this happened, a mysterious man appeared to put Alexander through a test. If he succeeds, he demonstrates that he is a worthy holder of the ring and gains the power to rule the world. It's a bit cheesy, but I always felt that the Millennium items were underused in the original series, so it's fun to imagine how historical figures might have used Millennium Items to achieve tremendous success, or how those same Millennium Items might have been their downfall. It was also cool to see Shadi put Alexander through the test before he can be deemed worthy of the Millennium Item, because that was what he did for Yugi in Season 0. There's also a part during the final battle when Evil Alexander attempts to read Yugi's mind because, of course he can do that, but instead of reading Yugi's mind, he becomes temporarily trapped, and then this helps Yugi defeat him. This is another nod to Season 0, when Shadi became trapped while trying to do the same thing. All in all, I'm not sure what to make of Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters. Was it a shameless cash grab designed to take advantage of Pokemon's decline? Or was it a genuine passion project meant to popularize another game from the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.